The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Sometimes it may be a skinky cabin channel and you look at your leader, some, your area head, no one can be a channel. Abisha could have done that because why? If you knew you would not drink, why did you cause us to risk our lives? But he kept quiet. Another time he said, who will go with me to source camp? That was a danger. Abisha says, I will go. Somehow they found Saul sleeping. And Abisha said, oh, we thank God. This is what the Almighty said. This is the day that the Lord has made. The king was fast asleep. But instead of killing him, he decided to mention it to the king before. Then the king said, you saw him sleep? Let him die his own death. I, we shouldn't lift up a finger against the Lord's anointed. If I were Abisha, I would have said, but you are also anointed. But David knows that that man, his anointing is public. It's not the time that you will come to your father's house and anoint you. This one is anointed for the whole Israel. He has been adored and you need to respect him. But Abisha will keep his sword behind him and will walk faithfully behind David. If he doesn't want to kill him, I also would not kill him. There was a day that Shemia was throwing stones and insulting the king. When the king was running away from Absalom, his son, he was even calling him useless man. Useless. And then Abisha said, who is this dog? Who is insulting the king of Israel? King, let me go and take off his head. Then David said, don't. Leave him, perhaps. It is God who is saying that he insults David. Maybe God will look upon my misery and the insult of this man and have mercy upon me. Then look at the theology. But Abisha didn't argue against the king. Never argued against the king. But let me take the big one. Second Samuel 21. 15. If you can read together. But I've seen that you are busy writing, so don't worry, I'll read. Once again, there was a battle between the Philistines and Israel. David went down with his men to fight against the Philistines. And he became exhausted by bread. Now, by this time, he was old. And Ish, Ishbi Benod, one of the descendants of Rapha, whose bronze spearhead weighed 300 shekels and who was armed with a new sword, said he will kill the king because he saw the king tired. And then he spoke to himself. I will kill the king. If he did that, he was going to become a hero. Let's move on. Shall we all say, but? But. The next word, Abishai, son of Zeria. This is David's sister. Came to David's rescue. He struck the Philistine down and killed him. How close was he to David. And what was he doing on the battlefront? Where was his eyes? How could he manage to see that the king was in danger? I would suggest that he was quite close. I would also suggest that his eyes was always on the king. Close and his eyes was on him to protect him. Very loyal to the king. Now let's take the next verse, please. Then David's men swore to him, that is the king, David, saying, never again 
will you go out with us to battle so that what the lamb of Israel will not be extinguished they didn't just see him as somebody they saw him as the lamb of the whole Israel and that if they killed him the lamb of Israel will be extinguished once they anointed him he saw him differently and he said, please, you are the lamb of Israel. You are a lamb. You are glory. So that it will not be extinguished. Brothers and sisters in the Lord. As supporting leaders of the Church of Pentecost, your loyalty is to God and to the church that has made you a minister. Loyalty in this respect means commitment to the body. Commitment to the body. It means faithfulness. Loyalty means sacrifice to the church of Pentecost. Loyalty means love, love, loving the church. Loyalty means going the extra mile. When we introduce the ministerial welfare practices. And then we gave some direction as to what to do and what not to do. So far as our finances were concerned and how to manage the pastors. Somebody told me this. He said they were in a room and this pastor overheard this overseer talking about the difficulty in his district. And so the overseer was saying that he need to repair the motorbike that belongs to the district with his own money. So as he was saying it, this pastor woke up and said, what? You are going to repair motorbike with your own money? Me, I will never do this. This ministerial welfare, I will never do this. That is why we have Joab and we have Abisha from the same womb. Who are you? Loyalty means going the extra man. Loyalty means intercessory prayer. You see, people do not like intercessory prayer. And sometimes on Tuesdays, I think that if you're a pastor of the Church of Pentecost, if you're a sophomore and we're saying that this prayer is a global prayer for the advancement of the Church of Pentecost, I don't think you should exempt yourself. But if it were any other prayer where we said the sick should come, then you see all of them come up. When we began this intercessory prayer, the first day, Almost 1,000 people joined. But when they saw that a thing was about interceding for the Church of Pentecost, we came to 300 on, on the Zoom. Because they are not interested. But intercessory prayer is the highest form of service that you can give to the Church of Pentecost. 